Okay, thank you. Welcome. Appreciate you being here. Um, I want to give a big shout out to David and Lee who graciously opened up their home. I want to thank the social committee. If you could all raise your hand quickly. Thank you very much for coming to the past. And thanks to Eddie for the wine. And thank you all, every one of you, to be here tonight and for what you do for us over the year. We know that you have a choice of where you give your time and your money and your energy, and we are so honored that you decide to be part of our organization. And if you give time, if you give your money, if you're out in the community talking about SVP, whatever we, whatever you do and however you choose to give, we appreciate you and thank you. So thank you for everything that you do for us. I have a very special guest tonight speaking to us. It's Lauren Pauls from the Community Resource Center. Okay. And we talk about a lot about the food program and the holiday basket program and about the work that they do with homelessness, but we don't talk much about their domestic violence program, which is a, a big part of what they do. And I did some research on this a few years ago because I was a little bit passionate about it. And at the time, and stats might be different now, a third of all adults have been affected by domestic violence. And at first I didn't really buy into that statistic and then I started thinking about my own life. And I remember back when I was in college, my best friend Robin from high school was engaged to somebody that I didn't have a great feeling about. And I remember that my friends had called me home to come do some sort of intervention with her. So I remember picking her up, and when I saw her, she had bruises on her face, and she had a, a swollen lip, and she told me that she fell. This was my best friend in the world told me she fell. And I know that she was completely ashamed and and embarrassed and confused. And so we went out that night. She never really told me what happened, but we went out to a club. We went back to my car, and the windshield of my car was busted with baseball bat, and the headlights were all busted. And she still wanted me to take her home to that situation. And it really made me think, like, wow, you know, I'm just this little college kid. It affects everybody. And so she stayed in that situation, and there were many hospital visits and emergency calls, and she finally got out of it. Um, but I remember driving away that night when I dropped her off, and I didn't know if I'd ever see her again, because that's how bad it was. And I'm sure that there are many people in this room that probably know somebody that knows somebody that's been affected by violence in that way. So fast forward a couple years, I moved to San Diego. I want to get involved in the community. I call Community Resource Center. I don't know if you could know this. This is like 20 years ago because I wanted to help out with domestic violence. And I remember going to one of the trainings, and there was this girl there about my age. She's probably 23, blonde hair, blue eyed, had an Ohio State sweatshirt on. Oh, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and it just reminded me once again that it affects so many people. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter if you're educated. It doesn't matter how cute you are. It really crosses all boundaries. So I am so appreciative of the work that Lauren and the Community Resource Center does in the community. And I'm honored that we've been supporting them over the last three years and what we have been able to do together. So with that, I'd like to introduce Lauren to talk a little bit about the center and our work together. You know, uh, we were actually funded and selected by Social Venture Partners because of our, what we considered an innovative uh, way to bring food security to San Diego. Um, and we were quite successful with that for a variety of reasons, including a lot of support of out-of-the-box thinking with SVP. Um, our whole social services program, which is what you probably know us about, was founded on the foundation of our, our domestic violence program. And, you know, DV is a well-kept secret in our community. And because we have safe houses, um, you know, it's not really open to the public. It's not like the food room and the bread room. But we serve a phenomenal amount of people in a given year. And the only reason, we served 250 women and children last year alone. The reason we can't serve more is because the, the resources are so limited, and it's really limited across the board in San Diego. Um, one of the things I think that we are very successful at is, you know, if you have a three-legged stool and one of the legs are broken, the stool is going to fall. And we've taken an approach 
that says you need to serve, solve every single one of the problems that a person brings with them. It's legal, it's emotional, it's life skills, it's parenting. Don't forget about the children. Those are our silent victims. And, you know, we spend 50% of our resources are actually spent on helping the children overcome the, the, uh, the domestic violence issues that they bring with them. Um, we took that same profile that made our program so successful in DV. We basically had a 95% success rate in moving women out from the emergency shelter out of harm's way into their own home in this economy working, paying their rent, and after one year actually going off of all welfare and, and support systems. So if we can do that with domestic violence, just think about how we apply those same principles and do it with our general population. And, you know, I really thank Social Venture Partners for believing in us and being a partner over the last three years. It certainly has been, uh, put us on the map. And one of the people said in the county when Community Resource Center speaks, the head of the county and housing departments listen. So we have gotten so much credibility with the support of Social Venture Partners. Our clients really do thank you because without the support of you, and you give us leverage in the community because of validation, we have really made a mark in, in all we do. I love bringing our besties here because we do a lot of work in strategic planning and a lot of it's very heady. But at the end of the day, that's why we do what we do, is to help all these people in the community. I would like to invite Mark Sackler up. Who dressed like a big boy today. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every new partner when they come on to welcome them to SVP helped us through a very transitional time of becoming our own 501c3 so that we're an independent organization and we can walk the talk and be just like every other nonprofit in the community. <coughs> he helped us with bylaws and the filing and all the stuff that goes along with that. He's helped us create our own infrastructure so we can be more sustainable with a strong mission statement and vision statement, core values. And he's helped Mandy and I tremendously on staff with IT and just being there. And personally, I know whenever I need anything, whether I just need to talk through a situation, if I need advice, if I need a mentor, I can completely count on Mark at any time. So I want to thank you on behalf of SVP, on behalf of the staff, and me personally. Thank you for everything. And I thought it was uh, apropos that you had said for the last three and a half years I've been helping you and Mandy because Jacqueline's my target now. And so I'm so sorry. Just wait. Yeah, just, uh, but I actually I want to work with Jacqueline because I do want 100 partners uh, in this organization. Uh, we fundamentally are a different organization at 100. And I know um, Jacqueline's going to do it. And I'm going to be there trying not to annoy her too much. Um, so I was at the Social Venture Partners uh, International <laughs> Conference. Uh, and I would encourage you to go to that. The next one is uh, October 16th in Minneapolis. 16th in Minneapolis. It's the, this is the fourth one I've been to. It's a fabulous con or a fabulous um, conference. Uh, great people, great partners from all over the country, and it is uplifting. Uh, one of the speakers uh, um, 
uh, talked about this story. And I want to relay it to you because it's about gratitude, and I am grateful. Um, there was um, some soldiers who were bringing food to a refugee camp. Um, and the refugee camp, as you can imagine, um, has a massive starvation uh, going on. And as you can imagine, when they bring in food, um, it's bedlam because everybody wants the food. And the strongest get to the front. And so the soldiers do their very best to distribute it appropriately um, and, and after, and I don't know the time, an hour or so, the food was all distributed as best the soldiers could do in a chaotic situation like a refugee camp with starving people. As everyone cleared, um, one of the soldiers saw a small girl, a 10, 12 year old girl with two small, smaller, and uh, he assumed uh, brothers of the girl. And um, they hadn't received anything. Um, they're the weakest, they're the most vulnerable. And so he goes and he looks and he looks and he finds a banana. And he gives the banana to the girl. And the girl peels the banana, splits it in half and gives it to her two younger brothers. And then she eats the peel. And to me, uh, you are all that soldier, and you are all that girl who cares to make this world a better place. And we as individuals will do soldier-like things, and like this girl did, we as a group will do even more. And I am grateful to be part of this organization <coughs> and um, honored to have been chair of this organization because we will make this world a better place. I am also incredibly grateful for Ray Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Ray is a wise and thoughtful and caring and loving individual who has volunteered to be chair of this organization. And uh, I am grateful for who he is and what he will bring to this organization in the future. So please welcome our new chair. You might imagine that's a tough act to follow, but I didn't recognize him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's Thank you. Moving in the right direction. And I can rest assured the staff that if they need to make a phone call about IT or something like that, I might not be the best board chair to do that. But first and foremost, thank you uh, for the confidence placed uh, by the uh, colleagues on the board. And it was a fairly easy decision uh, because it is a great board. Uh, it's well-rounded, a lot of um, different uh, disciplines represented there, and, uh, and it's a great organization. Uh, this model is so motivating to me. Uh, I've been volunteering since about 1989 in San Diego in a variety of nonprofits and held a variety of positions, and this uh, group, it just makes a lot of things, moving parts, come together. And so I'm, uh, I'm honored and uh, tough shoes to fill, but I will uh, try my best and uh, I look forward to us increasing our partnership levels because I am a sales and marketing guy, so <laughs> we can fill some gaps there. And uh, I'm really excited about the future and look forward to it. So thank you very much and happy holidays. Thank you. That just about wraps up our program. I did want to introduce you to our newest staff member, Jacqueline Silverman. We are so excited she is on board. 
Um, and if you are a guest here this evening, and if any of this resonates with you as you talk to different partners and you learn more about what we do, I invite you to join us as a partner and help us make a difference in San Diego. So feel free to see me or to see Jacqueline because we are here to answer your questions and uh, help you think through that process. Also, I want to thank Mandy, who is always here helping us do whatever we do. And I want to thank all of you. So I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Enjoy the party. And Don't you think we should have the first years stand up and tell us why they joined? <laughs> no, but Do any first year in particular like to do that? <laughs> we, have, we have a few. I came to the parties. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening.